Some of these are pivot. I don't know if they produce them with just, you know, really bad steel. But it looks like they just grew pitted over time. So the only way to fix this is to shave an entire layer of metal off. And uh, it's probably going to take the stamp off. You can see where it says one eighth on it. See how it's pitted? I don't know if you can see it on camera. But to get it on nice and shiny like this one would take a lot of grinding the metal off and it's going to wind up too thin and flimsy to use. So it's an issue. And this one's pitted too. And the older they get and the longer they sit around the more pitted they get. You see that's 10 millimeter? You see how dirty it was? It's a bummer. It's a real bummer. But anyway, enough about that. Um, some people improve their pool game really fast, you know. Some of these younger players just seem to come out of nowhere and just, you know, just... And because the public doesn't see what they're doing behind the scenes, um, think that they were just born pool players who just came out of the womb with a, a stick in their hand and ready to play pool. <laughs> That's not true. Um, here's... Uh, the main difference in, in why some guys excel their pool game and continually get better and better and better and millions and millions and millions and millions of other players don't. There's many people who play pool their whole lives and are not any better at the end than they were 40 years ago. Um, I think the key um, well, I'm going to show you. I get in trouble at the end of the rack that you're about to watch. And I'm going to use it to show you why some guys excel quickly and steadily and keep getting better. And most people, players, don't. Looks to me like a pretty simple run out. I don't see any problems here. You see any problems here? No. Yeah, looks good to go. Let's do it. Now we have a clear shot on the one. We can easily get to the two. Any balls tied up? Mm, no. I don't see any balls tied up. I don't see any major problems. Do you see the running? If you said something like yes, or to, yeah, this ain't going to be any problem, well, that's where you're making your first mistake. So I'm shooting a one ball here, I'm shooting a two ball here, I'm shooting a three ball here, I'm shooting a four ball here, I'm shooting a five here, the six here, the seven here, and the eight. All six pockets are going to be available for the eight. Does it really matter? Just get me somewhere near the eight. And this isn't going to be a problem. Do you see the run out now? If your answer was similar on the A, you still did not see it. And that's where you're making your big mistake. The greatest players in the world step up from the break when it's their turn to play. And they have a plan for all nine of these balls. Not three balls ahead, not four balls ahead, not two balls ahead, not seven balls ahead. All nine. And they're defiant and determined, and sound, and solid, and ready to run all nine balls before they get down on this one ball. The crazy thing about this is the more obvious of where they're shooting these balls and what pockets, the easier it is for them to decide. They don't have a lot of choices. But when you come up to an issue like this eight ball, where you, you're going to have all six pockets available for that eight ball, it becomes harder 
to determine what pocket you're shooting the eight ball in and therefore making the decision on how to run the end of this rack. When you're playing eight ball, things are more clear because you have your opponent's balls blocking some pockets, you have your own balls blocking some pockets. You can really see everything clearly in what you have to do. So it's easier to make these decisions on the whole rack, and it's easy to determine what you need to do before you get down to do it. So because I didn't decide where I want to be and where I'm going to shoot this 8-ball and have the world of options open to me, I'm thinking it's easier when it's really not easier. It increases your chances of screwing up not knowing where you need to be on that 8-ball and therefore how you need to get on the 7-ball in order to get there on the 8-ball. And that's going to determine how you shoot the 5 and the 6-ball. And if you've been playing pool for a few years, then you know damn well that ain't just a tiniest speck of momentary lapse in concentration will cost you this game and destroy your day. So you might be thinking, well, knowing what pockets to shoot the balls in doesn't tell you what pattern you want to play on this table. And that's the truth. You got that right, but it makes it a great starting point. And therefore, in my later videos, I'm going to go over seeing the pattern, and this is going to get a little bit complicated, seeing the entire pattern on all nine balls. So what are we doing on this one ball, and what are the options? Let's take a look. B because I want to play the cue ball off that right hand side rail to get right on the three ball. But option C is also not a bad option. I didn't shoot option A because there's a chance you're going to bang into the two ball and you could scratch or you know you could get really bad shape. Option C is just center ball soft stun shot uh, if you want to play the two off the bottom rail and come back in line for the three ball. Option A because of how I'm going to play this four ball and I have it all planned out and it might not be what you think. Option B is way too risky and you're moving the cue ball way too much and all you have down there on the three is that side pocket and you could easily get impossible for a shot in the side on this three. And any way you do it, it's going to be difficult to get back on the four. And option C is avoid it because you're risking a scratch and you're crossing the line on the three balls. So if you come up short of the line, you're going to have to stun it over, which means you're going to be risking a scratch when you shoot the three trying to get on the four. Yeah, it's just too, uh, too risky there. I chose to shoot it was top left and option C to get down under the four ball and eliminate running into balls such as the eight ball and also eliminate any scratch on the table. 
Option A, you're risking banging into the eight ball, and you're also risking a scratch in the right-hand side bucket. Option B is just an insane shot out where you're moving the cue ball all over the table and doing too much work. Assuming you're on the right hand side of the four ball line, which was the plan, all you're going to have to do here is roll up on the five ball and just make real good sure that you're not going to get stuck behind that eight ball. Option B is not a good option because it's going to be tough to get on the right hand side of the five to get on the six. And plus you're just doing too much with the cue ball and a lot can go wrong here. Option C might look right to some players, but it's not. It's a terrible option. And again, you're moving the cue ball way too much, and a whole lot can go wrong here. Don't even think about this. option B, but now that I've had time to look at it and think about it and study it, I think it was a mistake. I think option A is a much better option. And that, oh, we're going to come back to this and that will be more clear by the end of this video. Option A pulls the cue ball back and it's further away from the six ball, but I think it's a better position for the six in order to get the right position on the seven to get to the eight. The problem is we have not still at this point decided where to be on the eight and again that's where i'm making my big mistake option c is not a good option because it leaves us at too sharp of an angle on the six and there's a good chance you're gonna let the cue ball get away from you when you shoot the six to get on the seven Again, I went with option A, and again, I'm not real certain this is the best option right here. Part of the problem is I'm limited here because I had to use the rake, and I'm not the best player in the world when it comes to using a rake, I confess to that. And I think B is a better option, and this is with right hand English on it, to use the side, the left hand side rail to get on the A, but again, it goes back to not being decisive on where you're shooting that A ball. Option C is the best option here, but with, I mean, with a rake, you're kind of limited on what you can do here because you can't follow too much, you're going to foul. So, but this position that this shot leaves me on the seven is much better than the shot I left myself with. C would be the best option. <laughs>
with option A, and if I had actually accomplished something reasonable here, it wouldn't be too bad. It's not the greatest in the world, but it wouldn't be too bad. The problem is, when you don't know where you're going, you're going to wind up in the worst possible place with the worst possible people. And it's just totally amateur here, and I'm, I'm just I'm just going on autopilot and just doing what I've done a thousand times before, except just not thinking. And it's just wrong, and it's just stupid, and it, it's not even reckless, it's just plain stupid. So as ridiculous as it is, not knowing where you're going, I mean, if, if the cue ball had rolled further, I'd be okay on the eight ball to get on the nine ball. Um, but it came up well short of okay. So how do you say option B is better, which is not better, because now you're flirting with the scratch, and that's going much longer on the same shot. And it's not any better, uh, because we don't know where we're going. <laughs> Plus, this shot is pretty much impossible. All that spin that you're putting on that cue ball is going to be gone by the time you hit that second round, because the seven ball is taking all that English away from it. It's a full ball hit. So, I mean, it, the, the diagram here is nearly impossible. It is possible, but you're really going to have to spin the hell out of it. And there's a good chance that you're going to miss the seven because of all that spin. And it's just, you're you're get, you're doing crazy stuff here and, and you can't even consider this shot. As for option C, I'd love to say that this is the right shot, but with being wishy-washy on what we're doing with the A, I can't. You're just shooting in the dark right now. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the options that we have on the A ball. And then I'm going to cut, and then I'm going to go back to right before we shoot the five ball to show you what I should have done and how to avoid the mess that we now got in on the A ball. And while I'm here, I want to say when shooting this eight ball, what you want to do is get on the right side of the table. It doesn't matter where on the table you are as long as it's on the right side of the table because that gives you a chance to win this game if, if you make the eight ball. So for now, take your option on what we're doing with the eight ball and then we're going to cut back and show you what I should have done throughout this whole rack. And then we're going to do the loop back. And you're going to see exactly what I did. And um, then we're just going to close it out. But I will end the video with why, with the answer on why some players get great real quick and keep progressing. And most players do not. <laughs> So here you see me getting ready to shoot the five. And there you see me shooting the five. Now let's pause right there. And you see we we just bounced lightly off the rail and we got ourselves right here on the six. And again, that was shot without a firm decision on what we're going to do with the eight. So let's, before we shoot that shot, let's look at what to do with the eight and let's pick a pocket. It doesn't matter what pocket, let's just make a firm decision on what we're doing with this eight and let's shoot it in this pocket here. And now it becomes clear that I shot this five ball wrong because it's gonna be hard to get in a position on the seven to get right for a shot in that pocket on the eight to get back to the nine. But if we knew what we were doing on the eight before we shot the five, we could have got that cue ball right here Stunned it out to right here because you need this angle to go three rails back on this eight ball to get in the right position to get back down on the nine. Shot the eight in the side and just trickled up for an easy shot on the nine in the corner pocket to win this game. Instead of all that, I decided to be mentally weak. Don't be like me.
reason some players excel and most players don't is because the players who excel are constantly learning from their own mistakes. So every player occasionally gets a bad position on the ball and then they'll miss their shot. Um, most players never go back and try to figure out, and you got to put some brain cells in this and try to figure out what went wrong. Some players um, try to go back a little bit, but they don't go back far enough, and they go back to the shot they missed. Like, you see me get a really bad position on the eight ball here. And so they'll miss the eight ball, and then they'll set up if they do anything, they'll set up the eight ball shot and keep practicing that over and over until they start now on the eight ball. But they don't go back to the bad position, the shot on the seven, and why they got bad position on the eight, which is usually how they shot the six ball. So even if I had this rack figured out, occasionally I'm going to get bad on a ball. Um, so instead of going back to the missed shot, I have to go all the way back and figure out what led up to that bad position. I'm supposed to miss this 8-ball. It's not the 8-ball. It's the bad position and what led up to it. And then you can't just figure out what went wrong. You have to apply it to your game. You have to, you have to take, every time you miss a ball, it's an opportunity to learn. Not about missing balls, it's, a, it's time to learn what led up to that miss. And once you start doing that, your game will improve drastically. If you keep doing that over and over every day, you will get that right Thank you.